Hello and welcome to Clay to Canopy, the show where I attempt to make just about everything from the ground up. It is finally time for this big reveal of this Halloween themed environment, my witch's feast. But before I move on to that reveal, I have cocktails and cakes to get on with making. So come on, let's do this. I adapted Martha Stewart apple cider cake recipe to make it vegan. She had used EVOO, extra virgin olive oil, and I just thought that the olive oil taste was a little bit too strong, so I was switching that out to canola oil. I will throw up my recipe on the screen. So if you'd like to go ahead and use the Martha Stewart cake recipe, I'll link that in the description. I was lucky enough to find this mold on Amazon. It is a 3D apple mold after having used it to test out the apples. The apples did not release as is, so I had to go in and clip in four corners of the top mold where the round is in order to get the mold to fully release. I can't imagine unless you froze something rock hard that you would even be able to get it out of here without making this relief cut. So I'm going to start with my wet ingredients. Applesauce is half a cup automatically. Aside from making this plant based, I also reduced the sugar because I don't want to deal with a lot of processed sugars. So I'm relying on a little bit of the natural sugars and I'm using also a sugar substitute half a cup of cider. I don't know, have I altered it enough to where it's no longer her recipe? I don't know. It's certainly a lot different from where it started from. Look at that, perfect. So here's my first substitution. I have a quarter of a cup of brown sugar and I have a quarter of a cup of the golden Lakanto, which is a sugar substitute. The main recipe called for a regular white sugar, cane sugar, I am using a brown sugar. I think that apple and brown sugar go really well together. And a teaspoon of vanilla. Don't have a measuring cup. We're gonna guess. That's about right. This is my homemade vanilla, my homemade uh, bourbon vanilla. I'm gonna go ahead and get this blended. All right, so in this little dish, I have a fairly large pinch of salt, three quarters of a teaspoon of baking powder, a quarter of a teaspoon of baking soda. Add that into this mixture because I'm feeling a bit lazy. It's been quite a long day. You don't know it, but for me, it's been one heck of a day. Uh, I should be mixing these dry ingredients together, but I'm not, so I'm just gonna go ahead and mix the small bits in here. And then I'm gonna be adding a three quarters of a teaspoon. You know what? I'm gonna change this right here right now and add a full teaspoon of cinnamon because after making these, felt like it didn't have enough cinnamon. And then I also am gonna throw in a quarter of a teaspoon of nutmeg. Sure hope I remember this when I throw up the ingredients because it's not on my list. This is how I roll. Okay, I now have a half a cup of whole wheat flour and one cup of regular unbleached flour. I'm slowly going to add this in. Last but not least, because I am keeping with my color scheme, I am going to tint these blue. So I will have blue apples and I am just using this Wilton gel colors that are designed for cakes and candies. I'm going to put a bit of royal and a bit of this teal. Just use a toothpick to get my gel in because I want to make sure that I keep my containers sanitary. I have my oven preheated at 350. These took about 35 minutes to bake. First time I made these, I put them in a pastry bag, piped them in, but that was a massive mess. Even though this seems really thick, when it went into a pastry bag, it was like a nightmare. I'm gonna leave a little bit of room because I wanna put those fresh apples in. But I'm gonna put them into the batter once the batter's in the thingy. In the thingy. <laughs> it's been a day. It has been a day. Also, there's like, this massive excitement happening in me right now because this is it. Y'all, this is it. The big reveal is here. We've gotta make these apple cakes. Then we're gonna make up some cocktails and then it's time. All right, I have some fresh apple. I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze it into this batter. If you are one of those people who like to eat cake batter, this is vegan, so it's safe. Safe to eat raw. Hey, you coming to get your nose in the food? I don't care what people say about cats not having the ability to taste sugar. He loves his sweets. All right, I am gonna clean up the tops of these molds with some paper towel. And these are going into the oven for 35 minutes-ish. And then I'm going to stick them in the freezer. 
while my apple cakes are baking off, we're gonna move on to making some of the cocktails. So the first cocktail I am going to make is called the Merrywick Mojo. In honor of the witch that has been filling my nights these days, <laughs> the good witch, Cassie Nightingale. So this drink is inspired by the Merrywick women of Middleton. If you have not watched The Good Witch, I highly recommend it. The last two seasons came out on Netflix and I binged the last two seasons all at once. It's where I get the idea for the whole vision board thing. Totally another video at another time. If you've ever watched The Good Witch, you know that they drink a lot of tea and Cassie believes in herbal medicine and passes on lots of tea to many people as part of her way of healing. I am going with this raspberry hibiscus tea. I brewed up that tea. I'm gonna get some ice in my shaker here. I have one shot of vodka, two tablespoons, a shot of triple sec, a tablespoon of agave, and one cup of my hibiscus tea. I brewed this earlier and I had thrown some ice into it so that it could cool down a bit. And into the shaker we go. I think we will put the Merriwick Mojo into the long, tall, sleek bottles. This is more of a lighter drink. Yeah, this is gonna make one heck of a mess. I do not have a funnel. I really need one. I should be using one. I have lots of, shall we say, shop funnels. Do you have a funnel? I'm making one hell of a mess. I haven't even drank yet, okay? But I have been filming all day. Ah, oh, funnel. I could've used that before I made the giant mess. Fire to the rescue. All right, I am gonna clean up this mess before we move on to the next cocktail. I swear to you, I have not drank them yet. The next drink I am gonna make is the Mistress of Evil inspired by Maleficent. I have one cup of frozen blackberries that I have thawed out and I have a half a cup of some dark cherries that I also thawed. I purchased the fruit frozen because I wanted it sweeter. Usually the frozen berries are picked extra ripe. I'm gonna throw this onto my bullet here. Just wanna mash it up, because the next move I'm gonna do is to strain it. Back to my cup here. Now I have a strainer. Now I made this a little earlier in the week because I was testing out these cocktails. I had just some ideas of flavors that I really wanted to see together that I thought were fitting of these characters that these drinks are inspired by. I make some candied ginger and I realized in the process of making the candied ginger that I didn't actually need the candied ginger. I am working on some candied ginger and I have just peeled and sliced my ginger and I have it in a pot of water here that's gonna boil for 35 minutes. I think I can get a two for one deal as I'm candying this ginger. I also want to have a syrup when I'm done. So what I'm gonna do is just leave in the full amount of water and I'm gonna add my sugar. I'm gonna put in two thirds cup. I realize this looks like a crap ton of sugar, but it is not because I was just using small amounts of the simple syrup that's ginger flavored. Gonna do the normal boiling process until this becomes a syrup. It looks like it's just about ready. It's pretty thick sauce. I'm just gonna let this cool and set this aside and then they're good to go for cocktails. So that ginger infused syrup is what I'm gonna be adding in. I can post a link to Alton Brown link of candied ginger, which is what I started with. I added a little bit more water than he did so that I would end up with the syrup. I ended up throwing away the ginger because I didn't need it and just keeping the syrup, which worked really well in this cocktail. Adding some new ice. Now I gotta add in my alcohol and here is where the bourbon comes in. This is supposed to be a shot of bourbon and this bourbon is my vanilla infused bourbon. Actually, this is a double dose. So this was supposed to be two shots of bourbon. Two shots of bourbon with your puree and that means that I need two teaspoons of my ginger. Ooh, it's got some heat, that ginger. Let's see, we're gonna put these into this. And before, mama, no one can see anything. All we see is your head. I'm going to fill up about a third of this potion bottle with some club soda. Alrighty, and the mistress of evil is complete. I'm gonna clean up this mess and we're gonna move on to the very last one, which I absolutely had to make as promised, midnight margaritas. All right, fair warning, I did not test this cocktail. 
it is just a basic margarita with some coconut rum added to it because I cannot make midnight margaritas without putting the lime in the coconut. You know what I'm talking about. This drink is inspired by Practical Magic, one of my all-time favorite witchy movies. I'm using two limes, two lemons, my tequila, and then I'm gonna also be throwing in rum and, ah, oh, I put the triple sec back, and some agave. I need to grab the triple sec. So I am going to start off by adding my ice to my shaker. I always like to just squish my fruit first, give it a little bit of a roll around to get the juices going. And now my limes. All right, and my shot of triple sec. Shot of tequila. Shot of rum, coconut rum, of course. And we need to add in some agave. Usually I do about a tablespoon. One, two, three. This is a lot of citrus though, so you might wanna add a little bit more. You'll have to play with the agave, depending on how you like it. Sometimes that agave gets stuck on the bottom, so you gotta make sure you give it a good shake. Alright, let's get these over to the bar and hopefully my apples are cool enough. They did not rise quite as much as the last group. Oh no, they're not very tall. You're gonna have to flip them this way. You gotta make the most of it sometimes. It'll still work. Alright, I have the Niners gluten-free pretzels that are also, as far as I can tell, vegan. It is super light here if you cannot tell by the light shift. I am running out of time for the day, so I hope that these will set fast enough. If they do not, my other plan is to give them time to set and then I will set them up separately from the food and take a picture and include it into the final um, hoo-ha. <laughs> the food is done. I have been cooking all day long and I have been going since 7 a.m. It is almost 7 p.m. So it has been 12 hours straight. I took a break to throw in my mouth a couple of mushrooms, but other than that, it's been nonstop. So, um, yeah, I'm a little bit out of energy, out of everything at the moment, and this is the last day I have to get the full reveal done with the food and everything. I will not be able to get back to the studio for another three days. All right, you know what? This is not going the way that I want it to. This is what happens when you're pushing yourself too much too late. All right, I'm gonna call it here. These apples are gonna get redone because this is a complete disaster. So it's a new day. I have baked up a new batch. The other batch was a complete disaster. The batch itself was fine, but I was far too tired and I should have just filled up one less apple and the rest of the molds would have filled. This is what they're supposed to look like, not the sad looking half apples that the last ones were. I'm gonna go ahead and stick this pretzel in here. I have these bamboo fork and I've drilled a tiny hole in them and I'm hoping that this method is gonna work. I am going to pour chocolate over this and the stem and hopefully that'll be enough to hold it and then I can run some monofilament through that hole that I just drilled and dangle it from the tree. After I get these all good and covered, I'm gonna throw these in the refrigerator so this chocolate can set. These apples have set up overnight and I have different powders, a gold and speckled charcoal. They're food safe. And I'm using different brushes. Once the brush gets wet, it's really hard to get the powder to do what you want it to. So you want a really dry brush for this kind of deal. And I have just dedicated a brush to each color I have really messy hands right now, but I also have my monofilament, well, AKA fishing line, and I will be stringing this through the tops of these and getting this hung up on the tree. They kinda look really cool. 
All right, there she is done. I am going to forgive myself for this not being in time with the rest of the food because uh, life and things have just been really rough for me lately. I'm very happy I stuck through and got these apples up and on here. I was ready to throw in the towel at one point. And I'm also gonna forgive myself for not having a dozen more apples. Here's the apple part of it done. And I'm going to roll some footage of all the pieces come together with the feast and the other parts. All right, y'all, this witch is dead tired. It has been, it has been just a season and it has been a day of getting all of this feast food ready. Unfortunately, I do not have the apples installed behind me. There was just not enough time. I literally have been going for over 12 hours straight and could not get it all done. And I have the next three days booked. So unfortunately, um, this is where it is, but that's all right. Anyway, here is the big reveal of my finished ensemble. The bar is stocked, the feast is ready to go, the cat's toy is installed, we have the wreath, my costume of course, and the tree. The feast is very much so autumn themed and so I'm going to be releasing that after this reveal so that's going to come out sometime next month in November and I also did not have a chance to release the footage of the wand making which I have shot so that's coming up too. Too much to do, too little time. Well I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, share, and subscribe if you have not done so already and stay tuned for some more fun.